Okay, this is a quick video I want to run over. Uh, I had a, uh, a friend online mention that he's been having some difficulties uh, stitching some scan appliances to some patients. They're getting out of whack and he doesn't know what's going on. So I wanted to troubleshoot. And honestly, I haven't even looked at the cases in much detail other than to see that they're problematic. But why his problem is occurring, I don't know. So you'll kind of see me um, in this video. I'm going to try to troubleshoot that and figure that out. So um, I do want to make sure my audio is recording. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, all right, one of the uh, first things I want to point out, this is totally separate from the issue he's having, but even if his stitch is perfect, this is still going to cause him a problem. And I want to, it's this front. Why is this so um, sheared off on the front? So if we use this little, you know, you can move this around. Um, let's actually zoom in on this. Uh, if you use this little guy down here, you can actually click on it and see from the side. Now let's go ahead and look at this more like a traditional Ceph. Well, if you look at the plane of occlusion, there's a cant to it. It's tipped. Um, the software knows that front teeth, uh, our entered teeth, are sort of proclined from the vertical axis. So it knows that the, the pour-up needs to come in this angle. But this hasn't been oriented well enough to overcome that. Um, if I move it right up here, let's go ahead and turn on. Um, yeah, well, anyway. Um, yeah, it's not showing in here. It doesn't really matter right now for the 3D view. And I just, just close down the case and restart it. But it doesn't matter for this purpose. The point is, this is angled. You can see the um, hard palette right here is very tilted as well. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. So um, this could be overcome by essentially deleting this model, uh, manually operating the in, uh, impression, reinverting it, and so on and so forth. Big pain because then you got to align. You have to align the impression, use the, the beads, and then align the model to the impression and the scan appliance. It's, it's a big hassle. So the important thing is when you bring the DICOM in, the patient DICOM, you want to make sure to orient that properly. So I just want to point that out because I'm going to show you how I do that, or to remind you how to do that in a moment. But I wanted to show you why this is a big problem. Uh, even if everything aligned up perfectly, good luck making the scan. Uh, uh, a guide on this and there are, are tricks to doing it. I've had to work around some but um, I would not advise it. So um, there's that and now let's look at the the overall alignment. This view right here is pretty obvious that the teeth are out here uh, in the um, digital model but they're way in here uh, in the actual patient's mouth. So the, the, the stitch on this is pretty terrible. Um, so we can't actually see where the beads are, but I'm thinking that this is a bead, and well obviously this is the bead in the in the patient scan. But um, in this view, we can't quite see where it is on the um, the scan appliance. But I'm guessing this is a bead, and this is a bead, and that would bring this back quite a ways. So anyway, we'll we'll really see where those are in a moment. But um, so this stitch is pretty terrible, uh, and not by no fault of his own, the, the user that sent this to me, um, he does a lot of these and he's having trouble right now out of nowhere. So this may be a software thing. I might find that I don't find a solution. And if it's the case, well then we'll have to pass the programmers to see what's going on. But uh, for now, I want to point out those two things. The stitch is not right um, and the access is very important. So let's go ahead and, sorry. Let's go ahead and open up a new case using that, talking about that same patient. Um, here's the patient, uh, the patient's own DICOM. One, uh, one thing I do also want to point out um, is how limited this view is. I I'm assuming the patient scan was taller than this. Um, it, this maybe it's just a, a very small scan, but I would like to have more. This is so cut off. Um, I don't know. I, if you look at the, if you look at this, um, uh, let's see. Let's change views. Um, it clips off the back of these teeth practically, uh, or almost, and that makes me a little bit leery. So, anyway, I try to get more, a little more of this. I, I don't mind cropping the scans, but I think this is a little bit overly cropped. So, but yeah, this is how it is to begin with. So this is the part that's important, right here. We want to rotate this till the arch is in line. Um, don't worry, this little box will expand. Um, but we want to kind of parallel the biting, the um, occlusal plane. Um, and if they're severely procrying teeth, we even want to overdo it. Okay, sorry about that quick break. Um, I'm not sure where I left off. I apologize. But uh, so anyway, I was going to say is if um, I think I probably did say this. If there's a severe uh, proclination of the teeth, then you want to even overcorrect for it. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm basically trying to level this since this is cut off back here. Another thing, reason why I don't like doing that. But if 
I want to parallel this with about the CEJs, which looks about right. Maybe I'll overcompensate just a touch, um, and I'll hit OK. So let's look at the f the. Um, let's see where this ends up. The uh, hard palette. See how. Yeah, that looks pretty uh, ideal. Um, and I didn't mess with the uh, left to right rotation. It looked okay. I can tell that it's a little bit off, maybe. You know, there's a little bit of a cant here, but um, it's still uh, perfectly reasonable, um, manageable as far as treatment or planning goes. Okay, so um, not really sure why I'm having trouble with the 3D show up. Um, you know, sometimes it, it's messing with the. Um, uh, the sliders over here and then just restarting the software, but I don't I'm not really worried about that right now. So um, Okay, let's go ahead and bring in that um, Scan appliance, so I'm going to come over here to Empire Diacoms um, uh, or Actually, we're not using a scan appliance. We're using an impression with markers Which is basically a scan appliance, but one that we plan to invert a uh, truly a scan appliance is one which you're going to convert it to by basically putting holes in this thing. So it would look like your impression would be printed with holes in it. So if you're doing a denture and you want to keep it so it actually has teeth for good visibility of where the, the implants are really coming through, then do scan appliance. But most people are honestly probably going to be using impression with markers. So let's scan appliance. Let's bring this in. Let's see what the software gives us. It's going to try to do it automatically. Um, and uh, We'll see how good it is. And again, you can um, rotate this and stuff. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be orienting it on the patient. But if for whatever reason you weren't going to, if you were going to try and um, we were going to, you're going to invert it before orienting it, you'd want to make sure you dial this in really well. Um, but since we won't, let's go. We don't run it. I got it pretty good anyways. But you don't really need to worry about it. For instance, if it's upside down or whatnot. Okay, let's see what we get. So first it's going to do the impression alignment. And um, Okay, so when you get this screen, go ahead and maximize it. Don't waste your time trying to be really, um, you know, leaving it so small. And so you can see the beads up here. There's three out here, you know, Oh, there, there's another one. So we've got seven, eight beads visible. Um, and let's see how many we got here. So right here we've got six. And um, right now they're not even close to lined up. So uh, that means that um, let's go ahead and see if we can line them up ourselves. Um, I'm going to surmise that if you look down, looking from here down, um, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, which ones uh, are accurate, which ones are not. Um, so if I, one way, to, okay, so since I know that some of the markers, it got more markers in the patient than it did in this scan, I can try um, dialing this a little bit and seeing if um, more show up not likely to happen. Um, I mean, it's possible, but um, honestly, I don't think you really need to worry about that. Um, um, let's bring it all the way down here just to show you what happens. So now more st the actual impression starts showing up, which is going to start looking like this as we get farther and farther down. Um, I'm just giving you a demonstration of what's occurring, but you're not really getting any more beads. So just trust what it gives you. Uh, I think it was at 4,300. Okay, so now the question is, um, where are these, which beads are we seeing? Are we seeing these two and this one? Are we seeing these two and this one? Um, these two, is there one missing off the patient scan? So that's where it does get a little bit tricky. So that is the only time I would come down here and I would try to get this oriented in, in such a manner that I could really sort of um, align it with this. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. It's going to take the software a while to process it because now it's trying to turn a lot more... Uh, volume into something, meaning like right now it's only got six little dots, but now it has to um, 
re-smooth and create a whole new rendering with a lot more data than it did when it's just those six dots. So when you don't have them all and you're not sure which ones, um, that's where it can be tricky. So having a little more random um, spacing can make that a little bit more obvious. Um, vertical, horizontal spacing and whatnot as well. So um, looking at this, I can see that these two are by the two premolars. These two are probably by the two premolars. So I think these two are these two. Let's look at these dots. This one looks to be by this last tooth. And so now I'm trying to figure out which ones are which. And so we can see on this volume down here, let's, so this is at negative 73. So let's go ahead and even um, dial this down to about 350. Oops. Okay, we're back up and running. So actually, it starts at 4,800. Let's figure out where these dots are supposed to be coming from. My, you know, my gut right now says that these two are these two, these two are these two, and that one is up there. So let's go ahead and just try that first, and let's see what that looks like. Um, to do that, we can click on um, here, dot dot now or you can just hold the shift button dot 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 So you can go through the whole process of changing the slider bar, but as you see, it takes a while. So I, honestly, I would probably start with just guessing. Um, this looks fairly inconsistent in spacing the two dots. I mean, it's hard to imagine that these two are actually these two. I'm pretty certain they're not based on how this angle. It would be nice if this bead was there and that one there, but that should be plenty. So um, let's go ahead and click Update. And so now... We've got red and white lined up, red and white lined up. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. And we'll see what that looks like in the actual um, software. So it's doing the alignment first, then we're going to do this, the model inversion. So let's draw. Our, now, when I draw my limiting curve, I get a lot of landing area. I don't work, dink around with getting really close because um, it's a digital model. I mean, it's not stone that I'm worrying about wasting a bunch of stone or having a bunch of annoyance. So let's go ahead and get it way out here. Um, less likely is it going to actually crop some stuff off that I want to keep. Just really capture that whole vestibule, if you will. Um, and I don't honestly know which teeth they're, plani they're planning for this case. Um, but it doesn't matter for me. I'm going to make this as big as possible. This is just, if you will, the, the stone, I'm making the stone model right now. Uh, I can't imagine they're going to need any more than this. Um, but, okay, so let's go ahead and create the inverted model. And let's see if we shear off those front teeth. It's possible that we still do, but it should be a whole lot less than it was with the first, um, with the plan we saw previously. So are we going to get something like this is the big question. Okay, so here's our model. Let's take a look at it. Um, Looks like a pretty clean model to me. Um, I didn't actually mess with any of the uh, thresholds on the conversion of the uh, PBS into an impression. So, I mean, there's honestly, I, I should have. 
Uh, I didn't. I was more distracted with everything else. So that's possible that I have. Um, you know, it didn't default. It looks pretty darn good to me, but it's possible that it's not quite right. So we'll see that in a minute, though. Um, let's click next. And so now let's take a look at this view. This is the first view I'm going to look at. And it looks pretty dead on to me. Uh, you can see that these are disappearing at the same time as the actual cusps, um, size ledges. And yeah, I'd, I'd say this is about as good of a stitch as you're possibly going to get. Um, so do I know why the previous one didn't stitch? No, I'm guessing it was um, that the users kind of accepted that the software was going to find those dots and just automatically stitch. I, I haven't actually had a chance to talk with him. He just mentioned he was having issues. It's the weekend. I told him to go ahead and send me the files, and so I've looked at it. So um, again, experienced user um, just had a little trouble. That's pretty. You know, it's not uncommon. Hey, what do you know? The DICOM is showing up again. Let's turn that off, um, or let's turn it down. Let's really see what this looks like. Or sorry, wrong direction. And so there's our view, which is a terrible view to look at. We'll see how the stitch lines up, but still. And then one more time, let's look at this alignment. Um, it looks pretty good to me. I mean, if anything, you know, the impression was a little too large, so the resulting model is a little too small. If anything, I mean, I, I really wouldn't be worried about it. But if you, if that was a concern, maybe you dial up your spacer to point, th you know, point three zero as a to the 0 .20 default, um, but I think that the alignment is spot on, and I actually wouldn't mess with my offset at all. I think this is going to drop right in without a problem. So, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to zip this over to that user and see if this helps him, and hopefully it helps some of you out there that are having issues at times with scan appliance, um, or I should say, once again. Um, impression with markers, how to bring them into the software, how to get them lined up, and then planning from here on out is a snap, um, just like any other case. So, all right, hope this helps out.